Welcome on into the Real Kipper and Bourne Show. Nick Kiprios, Justin Bourne, Sammy McKee, Derek Brandeo, and David Sis. Boom, bah. We are live and in color. Sportsnet 360, Sportsnet Plus from 4 to 6, Sportsnet 590. And if you can't catch us live, download us at your convenience. And it is Friday, isn't it? Apparently. Is it Friday? Yeah, quick week. Is it off the rails Friday? It is. It feels, yeah. I don't know what it feels like. We don't know what it feels like. No. But we do know in about 30, 40 minutes, we'll welcome in Luke Fox from sportsnet.ca, who was at the press conference today. Yeah. That included Keith Pelly, Brendan Shanahan, and Brad Tree Living. Top of the hour, we're going to find Doug McLean. Apparently, he's traveling, so we won't have him on a Zoom, so he doesn't have to wear a, a, a sport coat for us. It's nice. He, but he told me the we'll location he is. I can look at my phone, but he's, he's traveling. Knowing him, he'll get a flat right during the segment or something. That's fine. We'll get entertaining Doug if that's the case. Um, we'll get really extremely entertaining Doug. He said, uh, on the road from Chicago to Port Huron, Sarnia. On the phone? Okay. Port Huron, Sarnia. Okay. There you go. Slash Sarnia. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, the, the most anticipated, I think, press conference in a while... Mm -hmm. That kind of kept us, I don't know if guessing is the right word, but what would be said, how would it? How would they say it, all came to fruition uh, earlier this morning mm -hmm. with uh, Keith Pelly, Brendan Shanahan, and Brad Tree Living. Or she could have live, like, like done it live. Like people watch it as a reaction video, like the Manning cast. We could have just watched it and judged it in real time. But we'll do our best now, Kim. So... Let's want to go to some clips. You guys want to get some early thoughts out in terms of anything surprise you, not surprise you. For me, I probably, we, we got everything we thought we would get. Uh, you, what did you think, Kippy? Yeah. I thought it was exactly the way I, I thought it would play out. Yeah. Where it was, uh, everybody's on the same page. There's some short-term goals because this team has to win now still. So... It's not about long term anymore. Uh, overall, I I saw it, especially Brendan Shanahan to a lesser agree, uh, degree, Brad Tree Living, two guys that would rather be anywhere but up on that podium. <laughs> like get me off as fast as you can. They're very short statements. The prepared parts were, right? were very succinct. Yeah. So can Keith Pelly's the new guy. He's going to come in. We've seen that kind of before with others like. Richard Petty or Lewicki, where they come in and they're like, Bluster. yeah, we're ready to go. I want to win the Stanley Cup and we're not going to settle for anything less. And, you know, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, um, he did that too. What's that? He did that too. Yeah, yeah he did. Yeah. Well, um, what else is he going to say? I guess my takeaway was, for one, to me, when everyone claims responsibility, that's what everyone is saying. You want to see accountability. You mm -hmm. want to see you know, people taking responsibility, be accountable. When everyone does it, it doesn't feel like anyone has taken accountability. You know what I mean? Because everybody Sheldon, shares Sheldon's it. like, I'm accountable. It's me. And Sheldon, oh, and Shandy said, you know, it was me. I'm responsible. And Tree says, it was me. I'm responsible. And everyone looks like they've taken personal accountability. And it's like, wait, did no one just take accountability? So, well, that feels like shit. But what else are you supposed to do? Everyone said what they had to say. Sammy, you got a few words in here and then we'll I, I just, carry on. <clears throat> I don't think that Brandon Shanahan expected to be there didn't feel like he expected to be there like he's been so in these other media press conferences that he's done at these end of year things he's been so full of conviction and like belief and today it felt so different than it normally feels his what would you team, say his theme was impatience you do here did you pick that like a number of times he talked about how you know there's times to be patience this is not I, the time for that i just felt like he was you're right didn't want to be there well but Sick of doing this same thing and a little bit tired, boys. That's what I got from him. I don't claim to know Brendan Shanahan well. I competed against him. I've had some beers with him. I have I know him like I know a lot of people in yeah. the league. But I've, to, to Sammy's point, like, I've never seen a, that type of kind of projection from him. He is a very confident guy. He's got an aura when he walks in yeah. the room. And it's like that kind of got stripped today. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And listen, he, he knows it. He's not dumb. He knows he's disappointed a lot of people, probably him the most. Yeah. 
himself sure. the most. Ten For years sure. to, try to, bring, to try to bring a Stanley Cup might be one of the only things he's truly failed up until this point. And he's going to get another crack at it. Mm -hmm. But I don't think he's ever experienced anything like this in his life, anything he's ever done before. This He, he looked like a guy that this was... This is new to me. Yeah. Not succeeding. Can I ask you, because this press conference basically was just set up for everyone to tell him that his plan didn't work. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, at the, at the core. This is like an the, intervention. At the core. <laughs> not to, intervention. Not to use that word, but at the core of all these questions, they're all like, hey, man, this ain't We're working. About you. <laughs> this ain't working. Yeah. And it's, this is your idea. Yeah. So what are you going to do? And he just had to sit there and kind of take it, I felt like. Yeah, I, I thought Keith Pelly came in and said, winning's our priority. That's what everyone wants to hear. Yeah. I thought Brad Tree Living talked like a human, which was amazing. He got up there and just said kind of his thoughts and where they're at. Shani had a tougher role today. Listen, he ate a crap sandwich today, let's be sandwich. honest. That's, that's but right. it's okay. He's a big boy. He yes. can take it. Today, the, today, was just, today was just about, for him and to a lesser extent, Brad, just... Get it over with. Go ahead, right? Let's have it. Let's just give it to me. And but we did learn some things. We didn't hear him say, we believe in this core and it's going to be fine. You know, we're going to, we didn't, it's different than other years. We expected okay. him to, to not do that. But All right, well, we'll get into some of those clips, but uh, we'll start with uh, the new boss, Keith Pelly, on, uh, on his opening statement. I will not make this a habit of participating in team operation news conferences but this is different this is the first time i've spoken publicly at a news conference as the ceo of mlse and with that title brings the heavy responsibility of overseeing the toronto maple leafs and i relish in that opportunity and at the core of that responsibility is the real reason I came back to Toronto. And that is to win. Good is simply not good enough. I can assure you that is the collective position of ownership. And when I asked during the interview stage, what was the definition of success to the owners? One of them immediately said emphatically, just win. I mean, I want to hear that. I do. Do you really? I do, Kip. I, I, good is simply not good enough. Listen, should be on every... But, but, but it, he wrote that down. That's on his like, paper, listen, for sure. I, oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't suggest that I have... If I was in, in Keith Pelly's yeah. shoes, I wouldn't do the same thing. Yeah. Okay? But it's just stating the obvious. Well, but he's got to state it. I know, I know, I yeah. know. But, like, I'm, I'm, for me personally, and I'm sure there's a few Lee fans, like, we're beyond that like no yeah. it's not winning yeah great right? great observation <laughs> right no 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 i i, I do, get do you understand that. like but, but it's, listen it, they, they're like a big he's the he's the at the head of a huge organization and you know you can try to talk about running a fluent thing or including everyone or we want everyone to feel whatever no it was nothing i don't think anyone wanted to hear about feelings or or direction or whatever they, they just want to win. That's all anyone wants. Yeah. So he went up and said, well, we, we want to win. And everyone went, great. Okay. <laughs> you know, like, That's why we got everybody together. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I, I've uh, heard people less positive than I am on that, but I, don't know. I thought, you know, he came out hot. Like with that first opening statement, I'm like, okay, here we go. And then just I thought, win. did he get you excited? Did he get you sure. feeling like I'm, I'm going to be different no. from all the rest of them? Listen, like you said. I've seen a lot of these boys. I've been through this. Yes. <laughs> like I, I my he radar, talks like he's sixty. But no, I'm I back. mean, I, I might as well be with the amount of stuff I've seen he over my fan years. Yeah. I you know, he said the right things, but talk is always cheap in these things. I've seen the exact same thing said sure. over and over in so these things. This is yeah. where we're at now. Like, okay, it's not it's not about this forty five minute press conference. It's like, oh, what are you guys gonna do about it now? Yeah. Right? That's actually, the core. God, I, someone tweeted something like, we hear this, rah, rah, winning is everything, and then you hear in the summer, Joel Edmondson extended. It's like, <laughs> that's the plan? You know, like, what? what's going to be different? That's what you want to hear about the player personnel, and we never got there. Did you get out of uh, Keith Pelly anything on um, on his 
feeling of bringing a team together. Yeah, how to win a Ryder Cup. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's listen to clip two. I've always believed that the formula for success is great skill combined with chemistry and unity. And in the midst of facing adversity in, in, in the first series down 3-1, I got a full glimpse of the chemistry and unity that Brad and, and Brendan have. Uh, I cannot comment on what has transpired over the last number of years, uh, but I can tell you that chemistry and unity is the critical components that add with skill in order to be successful. And winning is winning the Stanley Cup. So that's noteworthy I, too. I actually took out the Ryder Cup part because it was just like, oh, no. what was he? I, you know what? I wasn't paying attention as probably as hard as I should have to what the Ryder Cup. Yeah, what was his comp golf comparison? He well, no, he was the president of the DP Tour, yes. and he had some involvement in the Ryder Cup. I don't know. It's not like he was Trevor Elmerman. No, it's not like he but, was. Rory McIlroy. You know, he has <laughs> been a part of sporting success in a similar <laughs> yeah, role great. where you're not Austin Matthews, <laughs> yes. but you're the one. Yeah, sure. Okay. Anyway. Yeah. Um, winning is so winning he, the Stanley he, Cup. He, he, put, nice he put a lot of value in the, the two games that got the Leafs back into the series at 3-3 against Boston. Yeah. yeah he, did, did you hear that? Yeah. Yeah. That he's, did, that, did that save jobs? Could have. One thing that... So it's not so much Pelly there, but there are even... Shani mentioned, like, you know, these guys weren't here before, and Tree at one point was like, I wasn't here before, or whatever. I don't buy that part of any argument. Like, your job is to know what has happened before you. We don't know. I wasn't in the Roman times, but there are people who have done research on the Roman times so they understand it. You know, like, we need, they need to have a thorough understanding of what happened before them. That's their job now. Such a so, cop out just to say, I wasn't here. I don't right. know. So, Pelly, I'll give him some grace. It's been four weeks. Yeah. You got some grace to, to really get into it. Tree's been here a year now. There's no more. I wasn't here. I don't. That still counts. That was still included in the time that you're supposed to be evaluating whether mm -hmm. you're there or not. Yep. Agree. But he did. Yeah. He, he also mentioned that a bit too. So I thought Tree was bang on with most of it. What most of what, what else sticks out? Well, I think. The I'll, numbers, the, the, the analytics. No, I just thought. And the the comfort he had in discussing the team and the direction they want to go felt to me like someone not reading a prepared statement or trying to blow smoke, but just it was just a general. I'm talking about the feel in listening to Brad Tree Living talk. Uh, the I mean, I cut five clips. I could have cut a few more. The audio wasn't excellent at the he, you know talking about why he changed the head coach. Yeah. But I I thought the most noteworthy couple. We can start with this one, and it's more about the on the ice product. But the 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 clip on the lack of playoff scoring to me was actually really good. If we want to if we want to start there with Trilliving, yeah, it's a good it's a good question, Kevin. We I think there's there is when I when I've gone back now and and kind of looked at it, there are some you know there's there's some similar touch points, right? One of them is we haven't scored enough. When I looked at this situation and spent some time over the course of the summer is. You know, we wanted to try to, this team has scored in the regular season, hasn't scored in the playoffs. We, we increased our scoring in the regular season this year. I think we were the second, we were the second highest scoring team in the NHL. We were the number one scoring team in the, in, in the East. We increased, I think, our total goals for by 20 last year, or this year over, over the previous year. One of the things I wanted to try to do is it wasn't total goals, it's how the goals are scored in the playoffs. You score differently in the playoffs than you do in the regular season. So is it systematic? Is it personnel? Um, I think most of us in this room would understand it's more difficult. You're defended harder. You're played against harder in the playoffs. So we haven't scored enough. We haven't, our, our special teams haven't been good enough. And to your question, we seem to be turning the other team's goalie into the first star every night. That's what I text you guys. You're going to end up with a bunch of muckers. Just a bunch of guys <laughs> falling all over the crease for you know, Tuesday times six. I just, I actually Shock. just love that answer. It's and a I very think, good. Answer. I think it's the the way I've heard it articulated the best. Yeah. Quite honestly, you know, the one thing that, like, I'm not a huge analytics guy, but you know where I want analytics mm -hmm. is that when when you compare the playoffs to the regular season, it's like just one or the other. And I don't look at the regular season as like just one blanket 82 games. Start giving me numbers on on what your numbers are against 
legitimate playoff teams and who's good and who has better goalies. Don't give me, we scored in the regular season. Tell me where the goals came from against which teams. Because as we've stated over the last three years we've been together, mm. half the league stinks. Yeah. Okay? So I want to I want to know the Premier League. I want to know where the numbers are. How many goals during the regular season have you scored against non-playoff teams compared to the the Boston's, the Tampa's and the good teams? That's the the number that you need to focus on. Has someone given you something like this over the course of the year? Have you seen something like this? No, any, nothing. Nothing you haven't seen it cuz you mentioned it a few times and it's very easy nothing. to to get But those I do numbers. know like if Austin scored 70 goals, I can tell you right now over half of them are against non-playoff teams. Well, Kip, I hate to say that, but that's the exact I know, math. but that's, you know, but I don't know where the cutoff line is. Yeah. Like, Sa- Sam Reinhart, like, I think Austin had six hat tricks mm-hmm. this year. Mm-hmm. Six of those teams didn't make the playoffs. Yeah. Right? And I'm just, I'm just, if you really want to get down to it, it's, there's a small core of teams that can really look at themselves and go, yeah, we can we can go deep yeah, here. Uh, you know, this, this is how you come up with a great idea to research, and it's a really good one. Which core players are performing better against top half teams yes. compared to the other guys? Yes. Someone out there, get me that information. Mike Kelly. Or yeah. Or yeah. And, you know, well, we'll find that out. That would be a Kipper's Clipper. There you go. <laughs> Let's get some, get some details. You know, to kind of defend Keith Pelly a little bit here, like, you you went and fired a coach, at, and that was, I describe it as low-hanging fruit. Mm. But outside of that, nobody really expected him to, to make a decision on Brendan Shanahan. Yeah, they here. did. Yeah, what do you mean? Yes, they did. Uh, it's the reason why he turned around and said, he's my president, and he's a, a champion, and he's, yeah. that's. It makes sense to keep him. But I think plenty of people... For, for, for Keith Pelly, it makes sense to keep him. Yes, it does. Right? It does. It makes no sense to send him home. And you know, lots of talk about Brandon only having one-year deal. He hinted that might not be the case here. But regardless, mm-hmm. you're really going to send him home to, to collect a paycheck? And it's a big paycheck, guys. Yeah. Big one. You think, but I think this is a, a situation of a two different circles of conversation there, Kipper. Maybe the people, like, everyone expected him to not be around anymore like i think one of the biggest conversations right after they lost was like well that's it for shanahan that's it for this era of leafs that leaves hockey so tell me something if but if if the, i get why he kept them if, though, the pre- but- if it went today if it was just keith pelly and brad tree living up there by themselves yeah. uh, how would you have felt today okay to be honest i going into the press conference wouldn't have felt that way but the way that brad tree living handled himself today and the way he talked and the way he just my trust in him and it's talk is cheap, but my trust in him went north, went up yeah. after this press conference, and I would have felt differently. I thought he spoke beautifully. What's I did. hard? What's hard with Shani is like I do trust his decision making. Making I have a lot of respect for him. Think he's, you know, by all accounts a good guy. But there's a lot of emotions tied up in this now. You know, where a guy trying to hang on to his job who's partially responsible for the failures. It doesn't quite feel like a fresh yeah. start. And what about like if they change the whole philosophy? Does he still get the same credit that he would have if the core four thing had worked? Right. Like if if they're like they tra- for whatever, for example, they trade M- Marner and Riley are gone, yeah. and those guys are part of the thing, or Marner and Tavares are both gone, and his whole philosophy was the core four is going to work. It's going to work. If those guys get traded, you change the whole philosophy of the team. Is it still him getting all the credit? Like I, I don't. Know. It it depends on like how do you view this now. We it, still don't know what he does. No one really Br- talks Brendan about that. Brendan Shanahan, when he signed uh, 10 years ago, yeah. it started off with Lewicki, mm-hmm. and then Lewicki fell off, and then there was nobody outside of that. So Brendan got to go to the board on all the decisions, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. yeah. Now that's not the case. Now he's got to go to Keith Pelly. So Keith that, that's board. a major change in his in his role. Role. Mm. So now do we get the sense that Brendan and Brad are going to work together and when they have a big key decision, they go to Keith and Keith says mm-hmm. yes or no? Or We should, add, should, we should add another right? step to these. We should add another step. It would have been nice to get a question about the, the hierarchy for hockey decisions. Yeah. I do think that there's been an evolution in the role of president and I'm not sure what Brendan's role is supposed to be. Because initially I felt like he came from the NHL 
and was taking a business job. Like president to me was a business role for a lot of these teams. But now it feels like a hockey job. So I don't really Well, he was hockey operations, which... What does that mean? It means... Like running a hockey team yes, is hockey hiring operations. a general manager and sure. overseeing the, what trades and the coaching philosophy and okay. personnel. See, operations to me isn't... Operations hockey. top to bottom for me. Yeah. Anything that operates the hockey club... I am the president. Okay. I believe you, and I yeah. believe me. I, I'm saying I don't know. To me, I yeah. always thought of it as like, okay, how do we how do get the cheapest flights to Denver? You know, like that's the operation. call a travel a, agent. Yeah, okay, good to know. That's what I thought Brendan did. He called travel agents. I don't know. Uh, yeah. So, anyway. anyway, so that is... Um, we haven't heard from Shani yet. We haven't, and I would say the... I don't know if you want to do the opening statement first, but clip two, uh, Luke Fox asked a very good question. You tell me where you Yeah, go. well, I mean, I think well, the biggest conversation in the offseason is about Marner and Tavares, right? And Luke asked a very pointed question about if he, if he would be willing to have you approach them to waive the no-trade clause, basically, and this was the answer to that clip two. Thanks, Luke. I, um, you know, I think it's important to state, as we've discussed even you know, since the season has ended, that everything is on the table. We will discuss everything. I don't think it serves the Toronto Maple Leafs in any fashion to discuss those things prematurely, uh, to discuss those individuals prematurely. Uh, our focus right now is on finding a new head coach, and certainly that new head coach will have an important voice as part of our decisions going forward. I'm just simply saying that, that whatever questions you guys ask us here today, generally speaking, are things that we're going to have to consider after the things that we've seen. Um, you know, Brad and, um, and Keith um, are relatively new here, but uh, I am not. And, and I have seen some of these things over the years. And again, there, I do believe there's a time for preaching patience, and I do believe there's a time where you have to examine some of the patterns that persist. So everything will be on the table. Not to get into any specifics today, I don't think that serves the Toronto Maple Leafs. So address the patterns that persist. So that's obviously talking about postseason failures. I don't understand the word prematurely. I don't think it helps us to say, well, what's premature about it. It's time to have the conversation. Uh, and patience too, right? Like that, that's a tough word to throw out to Leaf Nation. But he said it's not time yeah. for patience, which it's not, which is why it's not premature. It's actually time to have that discussion. Yeah. So I don't. But, but he did mention that there's also time to, to not make hasty decisions as well mm -hmm. for sure but i think if you're gonna strip down the politician later sure, that answer through a speak the human on me the question the answer she, is yes yeah and if, like yes well he said generally speaking what you're gonna ask us about we're gonna discuss yeah <laughs> you know it's gonna come up but listen it's little from column it a, it's, little it's, from again column it's stating the obvious you go to any trade deadline on any team we're gonna look at anything that makes our team better but they didn't say that in the past in the past, they said, we believe we have what it takes in this room right here. We have it. Yeah, but but mm -hmm. there was. <laughs> mm -hmm. But this time, you know <laughs> what would happen if we, they would have tried that statement. Yeah, we right? lit them up. <laughs> oh, the right? firing squad. Me sharpening the knives. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I, I guess the idea is they came out and they said they're going to do what, we, what they should do. They're going to talk about all these things. Talk about potentially moving some pieces. I guess they got to hire a coach. Beyond that, you're right, Kip, that it was kind of what you thought it might be. There were no yes. huge shocks. I think if you're them and you're sitting back in the green room after the conference, you went, nailed it. You know, we didn't get in any trouble. I don't oh, know. Yeah, they're clinking glasses I don't at think Harvard anybody's 60. going, we nailed it. We well, got we got we through it. We consumed the crap sandwich and didn't die. We got through it. Yeah. Now let's just go to work, I guess. Yeah. I guess. Uh, you want to go to Brendan Shanahan on, uh, oh, we just did Marner and Tavares? Yeah, I mean, he kind of alluded, some more changes being needed, just more further to kind of the the, the clip two there, if you want to play clip three. That is that is the difficult question um, that we've we've looked back and had different experiences where if you were to, if you were to just live in a vacuum and, and just view this one playoff, you may have a different view of our team and the optimism and the, and the closeness of where they were, but we can't think that way now after seeing what we've seen year after year after year. And that's where I'm saying that I, I do believe that there's, there's a time where the right answer is patience, and then there comes a time where you have to say that 
that you have new information to you, the information has evolved, and you have to adjust your way of thinking. So, more alluding to the fact that things have to move. Yeah. I thought a large portion of the press conference that interested me was the injury reports. You guys want to discuss I got, those? Uh, I, did they get pushed on it? I mean pushed. Like, there were people clamoring to figure out the injuries? I wanted to know, didn't you? I know you wanted to know. I'm just sitting there going, I would have avoided it like the plague. Every year, though, they, they yeah. people report what happened to their guys. Yeah. Um, William Nylander, we knew severe migraines. I think they called them ocular migraines. Um, Austin Matthews was sick for a bit. And then head injury issues. So concussion-like symptoms, I believe. Okay. No. And he was only cleared for game seven. Yeah. Okay. It's... We don't know, mm-hmm. right? Still, like you didn't. We I just mean, don't know. Maybe just say concussion, just maybe say con- not. Just say I don't concussion. know. If it's a concussion, why wouldn't they just say it? Because they're not sure, so you can couch it with symptoms. Okay. I think if you say concussion, right? then you probably would have had to go through some sort of protocol okay. that they didn't go through. But yeah, he. Joe Wall. So here's the one I don't like. Joseph Wall. This, this that. I heard them all. I heard all the things, and I was like, yeah, MCL sprain, shoulder well, you, surgery. You, you, was Joseph Wall bad back? Sprain back. Sprain back. I'd rather have a sprain back than a headache. Yes. I don't think. What, what? I'm saying like sprain back to me is a sprain back. Headache when you're not sure if it's a concussion or not is like, come on, bud. Which one? The head? You think you should play with the head? I'm just saying if it's, I, I think he should have found a way to kind of push himself through it. I do. Oh, wow. I do. Yeah, I mean these. Head, and I'm not I don't agree with that unless one. you're defend. If it's not a concussion, to me, like at least a sprained backs, it's there. It's but a sprained sprain back. back it's a like physical... maybe you're maybe you're got a concussion. Maybe you don't. Maybe how much do you how, like? I've played, you know, with headaches before. I mean, uh, headaches is severely minimizing what you know it may be. If he had a headache, he'd take aspirin. I'm, I'm, and play. I'm saying it's a it's an easier sell. A sprained back is an easier sell than a headache. That's all. Not to me. I because it's not a headache. Okay, then why are you telling me that you have a problem with a sprained back? Because I think a sprained back is a physical ailment that you can play through with drugs and heat and <laughs> everything else. We're saying the same thing, but we got opposite sides well, on sure. headache to a back. Well, there's nothing to. There's no. You can't put ice or a heat pack or take something like when you're foggy and sick because you're your brain's not right. But to me, a physical ailment. <laughs> That's funny. We do not agree. That's funny. Is it? Wow. I'm like, find a way to get through a headache. Yeah. And you're saying, find a way to get through a sprained back. Yeah. No, it is. I, I, <laughs> the back is the back. Yeah. Either way, people think we're animals. Yeah. I can tell you that. Buddy, but the game's an animal. Yeah. Okay. This uh, is the way you need, this is the way you play the game. Right. This is the culture of the game. Yeah. Okay. We put people on pedestals that aren't supposed to play, but play. What a warrior. That's how you win in the playoffs. This is what you need. This is leadership. This is, mm. that's the way we've talked about this game for generations. Because people do put their physical I want on the back. line for their team. That's how you get a statue. It is, uh, I would love to talk to teammates of these guys and be like, any of those bother you at all? You what know? do you think? I think probably. Yeah. Would you like to hear Raptor Living talk about the gold tending for the Toronto Maple Leafs? Yes. Okay. Clip five, please. Joe, I, I, I've got faith in Joe. Now, like everybody else, there's questions. There's questions that, you know, why the biggest, biggest question with Joe is he's getting, he's, he's gotten injured a lot. Um, we have to dig into that. Is that sometimes that happens? Sometimes bad luck happens. Um, is there a training issue that we have to, to deal with? Is there, do we need to change something in his off ice routine? All those things is, is what we have to dig into. I believe in Joe as a goaltender. Um, we have to support Joe. Ilya's, Ilya's contract's up, but we certainly, we certainly have to try to put ourselves in a position where we're not, we, we have the sec, that we don't have the second best goaltender uh, in each of these series. But I think it's a function of both sides, not just our goaltending, but what we do to make things difficult on the other team's goaltender. Um, they got to yeah. go get a goalie. Absolutely. Couldn't agree like, more. Uh, like if the list wasn't long enough. Yeah. Now the Samson one is just like his contract's up. <laughs> that's, that's, <laughs> no further comment. His contract's up. Yeah, that's all you need to know. So he's not coming back. But oh, by the way, uh, the guy sent me. I got the stats already on the guys against playoff and non-playoff teams. We can talk about it later. 
Okay. Yeah. Thanks to Josiah Bosch for that. Oh, there you go. Our guy. Yeah. Um, uh, how good of a goalie do you need now? Uh, UC Soros. I don't mind paying him 5.5 for next year. I mind everything after that. Now the question is, mm -hmm. is Joseph Wall, if, if you think you can solve him not finding ways to be hurt, then it's not Soros. Okay, who is it? I don't know. Why it's, is it it's, Soros? Uh, because you trust because, Wall. Because, because, because Soros is coming to be the goalie for the next three or four years, and Joseph Wall will never be anything more than a backup. That's why. Well, yeah, but I mean, Soros, if he's a free agent, and you're kind of playing that year as a, a buffer year, you have your, I don't know, you have a pretty good goal, goalie duo. And they have the guy in the minors, is it the Askarov kid that's mm -hmm. like their goalie of the future? Trot said they maybe want to pay Soros. I don't know if that's true or not, but... To me, that's a massive target for me. Markstrom, he he was getting shopped. Oh yeah, I'm sure Calgary. Was, they're Calgary, lucky. yeah. Calgary won't trade. Yeah, with Toronto. <laughs> Why is every guy that at least want to trade for on Calgary? I don't know. It's <laughs> so many guys that would have fit here this year. <laughs> yeah, but clearly that has to be addressed. And yeah. something, and we've had this conversation. Like, how, how does a guy find a way to get hurt all the time like this? Bad luck? Is it just bad luck? You know, I suppose it is, but, like, people are made differently. We have different physical constitutions, and some people are a little bit more hardy for whatever reason. Uh, he doesn't, he seems to have pigeon bones. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I hope he figures it out. There are cases in NHL history where players have long runs of bad injury luck, and then they kind of figure it out. Remember Crosby's concussions? We were like, this guy's yeah. never going to play a full career. God, that, I mean, that... Him, uh, sorry, him missing game seven, it just that shook, the, I, I, shook the trust to the core. And I wonder, like, could he have played two days later? Like, is it just one of those things that it was just a tweak before game Couldn't seven? Lo you know, it was wasn't too loosen quick up a turnaround on and Flew, got the plane. Point three yeah. but is that seconds but to yes. save a shutout. But it wasn't the knee. No, I, everyone no. thought it was but, the knee that he kind of bent up. So if it was later in that game, maybe it was a different thing than well, why that. Why couldn't it have been that play? I don't know, Dova. Knows. I'm not a doctor, pal. I was saying that Willie should play with eye migraines. We clearly and... are not doctors Listen, either. Everyone thinks we're uh, Neanderthals, but yeah, we are. Yeah, you're right. We are. Um, anything else from those clips that you see there that you're interested in? No, but we got to yeah, we can we'll come back them. after the break. Sure. Um, we'll get uh, Brad Tree Living's thought on a coaching search yep. and the latest on uh, Joel Quenville and the thought that maybe he could be back on an NHL bench as early as next season. Oh. Okay. And Luke Fox, all after the break. Don't oh, go away. wow. Nick Kiprios, Justin Bourne, Sammy McKee in our Leaf Edition Hour, the Real Kipper and Bourne Show. All right, we go to Luke. I thought we were doing Luke at 440. It's 438. Oh, is it? <laughs> yeah. oh. Okay, let's go to Luke. <laughs> Luke, how are you? I'm doing okay. Okay. I think I might be... Might be done with Leaf press conferences until we, we go meet Craig Berube or something in a week or so. <laughs> okay. You, you, you tell me where you want to start on uh, what, you, what you saw and what you heard uh, this morning out of uh, the three bigwigs from the Toronto Maple Leafs. Well, I think you hit it right there. I, I think just the fact that there were three and not two. Uh, for once, Brendan Shanahan was not the most powerful man sitting up at the dais you know uh i i think keith pelly's presence and he said hey i'm not going to make a habit of this i'm not always going to be here but just him showing up made it feel like there was some weight to it um you know he said the things people expected to hear like i want to win a stanley cup and nothing uh below that will be satisfactory like that's what ownership wants that's what i want we want to win but just his presence uh kind of diminished immediately Brendan Shanahan's role. So he's sitting there and suddenly he has a flesh and bone boss that he reports to someone we can mm -hmm. see, not this, you know, faceless board that he reports to. Uh, so, you know, I, I think the other thing was, is he going to can Brendan Shanahan right away? You know, he's had 10 chances to build a team that goes deep and hasn't got it done eight legitimate chances in terms of a roster that has made the playoffs. And I think that was the big question. Is he going to fire Shanahan? Um, obviously he's not, he's sticking around, but 
for the first time in a long time, it felt like Shanahan's power is dis- diminished and his job is very much on the line. Luke, what did you take away as, oh, and I hate this corporate buzzbeak word, actionable items from that press conference? Like, what is going to happen to the Leafs roster? What did you take away for actual tangible change that's going to come? Well, they said everything is on the table. So I, I think that actually should include a conversation with Mitch Marner and John Tavares. They hold a lot of power here. And the fact that they negotiated no move clauses, they earned that. Through their negotiation, I'm pro player. Like if you get everything you can, so they have that. But we've reached the point now where they finally realized the core five isn't working. Like they, that's finally sunk in, and time will tell. I, I'm, I'm afraid for Leafs Nation that maybe it, they've figured this out too late because the players have this protection. But at least they're going to have that conversation with them. I think they, they will talk about that. The other thing is. I think they realize Samsonov is gone. They want to change Joseph Wool's training habits over the course of the summer to hopefully turn him into a goalie that can stay healthy. They love the guy. They love his mentality. Mm -hmm. They love his positioning, his calmness in the net. And I would agree with that. But what good is that if your season's on the line and he's up in the press box because he's too unhealthy to play? So I think they want to take a look at how he's training hopefully get him on a healthier regime. They're going to have to find a tandem mate for him. That's an actionable item because Samsonov's not coming back. Uh, And they're going to have to build a blue line and they're going to have to find more guys, you know, that are are playoff ready, that are playoff reformers. Uh, Bradford Living said something really interesting. He said, our goals in total uh, got escalated. We're growing that number, but he's looking at the how we score goals and the how has gotten worse. Do they need to do something in the off season? Can they, can they look like the same team come September in training camp? I don't, I don't think they can. I, I think they need some bigger changes just because when imagine those guys all reporting into camp in September and yeah, there's going to be a new voice in terms of the head coach. Uh, but when the going gets tough, are they going to start throwing gloves and bickering with each other because it's the same faces that have had so many disappointments or are they going to feel like there's a a refreshed sense of new energy amongst the roster, Mm -hmm. not just amongst the coach, not just the new GM, but actually the guys they're, you know, quote unquote, going to war with every day. I I think that there needs to be a reset there. I I don't think it would fly. Yeah. And you hope it's not like in March, they're like, you know, we're going to do it at the deadline. Like it would be nice for the team to have a fresh feel going into the uh, season. So then the question becomes, what is your sense or understanding of how the hierarchy works? You know, we were talking earlier in the show about Brendan Shanahan's role in the hockey decisions. We want this player. We don't want that one. You know, do you think he's heavily involved in the day-to-day decisions on, you know, this is who we want to play? Or is that really tree living? Oh, like the roster, like who they're dressing? Well, who they're dressing, who they're trading for. Like how much is the actual personnel uh shanahan related my my sense is who they're trading for absolutely yeah who yeah that type of stuff as in oh we're gonna healthy scratch david camp tonight i don't think it goes that that deep that okay. granular I, I would i would like to think not i would like to think he trusts trey living to handle that type of stuff but yeah mitch if are we gonna have a mitch marner trade conversation for sure shanahan's involved in that mm-hmm. now i think I got my sense was Keith Pelly wants to be a little hands off and let them do their thing, but he's going to be keeping a much closer eye on what they do than the board did, which is, which is who Shanahan used to report directly to. Gotcha. We're talking to Luke Fox leaf and NHL writer for sportsnet.ca. Regardless if they uh, go to John Tavares to, to lift his no move this summer or not, do you fully expect that, in his last year of his deal, a transition to captaincy, do you expect him not to be the captain next year, even if he returns? I expect that to be a conversation. Yeah, I'm not I'm not so sure. I'm not certain it's going to go one way or the other. But I actually think, you know what, in being around John these last couple of years, he often defers to Austin Matthews. Like, he's one of the best players in the world. He's the engine that drives our team. 
So I, he's a smart guy. I think he knows that he's no longer the, the alpha dog. Um, and I, I got to give some props to him. I, I love the fact that he's dressing up for Hockey Canada, you know, and, and going over there. He's, mm. he's fighting this. You know, he's fighting father time. Uh, I think in deep in his mind, he's like, maybe I can make the fourth line of, of Team Canada in the fourth Four Nations Cup. I think he's that driven. Now, whether that's realistic, that's up for debate. But he is not going to go down without a fight. But in terms of the captaincy, I think there's a way that this could be a smoother transition than some people realize. Because I think Tavares has already conceded that he's not the main guy here anymore. Mm-hmm. So Sheldon Keefe has moved on, and there's an open coaching position. What are you hearing about Sheldon? Is there any opportunity for him elsewhere? And what about potential replacements for him? You know, where do you have it sort of narrowed down to a handful of guys you expect? Yeah, for Sheldon, I'm hearing Jersey, um, which would be really fascinating. But it's it's entirely his choice. You know, he's 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 got a great he's he's got it made. Right, he's got the soft landing. He's getting a raise coming up, and he doesn't have to coach a day of that that raise if he if he doesn't want to. Or so there's there could be a chance where he jumps in, stays right in the league, and say, "Hey, I want this. I I thrive off this." Or he can take a year off. You know, you guys know how this business is. You know how quickly coaches get fired. Maybe there's an even better opportunity that pops up midway through the season, or he takes a full year off just bees a dad collects his paycheck and then looks at the landscape then so uh he's in a really nice position which might explain all the the smiles in his farewell video that he shot <laughs> um and as for the the leafs coaching position i am hearing that craig brew is the front runner uh i checked in with with someone who would know and, and you guys should, maybe should follow up with doug on this one because he's the gerard glant whisperer uh, to my knowledge, he hasn't yet been contacted for an interview, but I think he would be and should be a person of interest. I don't think they want to uh, uncover s- some new upstart coach. I think they're going to get a familiar voice, whoever it is. I wonder if the Leafs have enough power to talk the NHL into reinstating Joel Quinville. Um, it's just, I-, I think, you know, if there were no, if there was no baggage, he'd probably be the perfect guy just because of the presence he commands. I think that this group needs a voice that comes in there that with some heft to it, a guy that they're, they're going to listen to and respect um, and preferably with a, with a ring on his finger, or some deep runs on his resume. Uh, but right now, yeah, it seems like Brube is the front runner. I hope they interview multiple guys. My understanding is Kyle Dubas didn't inter- interview a single other person. He just handpicked Sheldon Keefe. And if they just handpick, Barube, the way Shanahan handpicked Trey Living without really doing a thorough search, I, I think that's a mistake. I think should, they should take their time. And maybe they should wait to see how this Carolina Hurricane series shakes out. Maybe they get swept. <laughs> you want a coach that's been swept two years in a row? <laughs> for I want a coach. I don't know. I want a coach who no coaches a team. Yeah. <laughs> oh, for 14. I want a coach play, that gets his guys to take 50 shots and tries to bring we will Sturkin down. Keep- <laughs> We'll keep an eye on the uh, coaching carousel. Hey, Luke, thanks for doing this, man. Okay, thanks for having me. Thanks, right. Luke. Have, Luke Fox. Have a good one. So Luke mentioned Joel Quenville. Mm-hmm. Now the word I'm getting out of the National Hockey League is that um, that his future is undecided as of yet, and they have not ruled out Joel Quenville coming back as early as next season. Hmm. Now I'm wondering if that's the influence of the Toronto Maple Leafs saying... We're opening this up, and we'd like a chance to talk to Joel Quenville. Sammy, how did your poll go? Hmm. Funny you So, asked. McKee put out a poll to yes. Leafs Nation. Would you be okay with Joel Quenville as the head coach of the Leafs? A uh, couple it, thousand votes. In 24 hours, 2,000, uh, over, just over 2,000 votes, 52.3% of people said yes. Wow. 47.7% of people said no. That's tight. Mm-hmm. That is... You know, for a guy who's won three Stanley Cups, that's obviously reflective of like people's when, discomfort. When did he last coach? Florida. Yeah, in what year? 20... Yeah. Like, how long ago? 21? Is it three years ago? Yeah. It's a it's long time. Seasons. Well, I think the best point from yesterday was just, you got to tell him he can either coach or he can't coach. You can't leave him kind of dangling. Like, you can coach in two years. It's a five-year ban. You can coach 
he co- he, is, is he, he coached seven games with the Florida Panthers in 21-22. Uh, his record, his, full season, essentially. his record at that time. Seven do, do you, can you? What's that? His, his record at that time was seven. They were seven and zero, and yeah. uh, he was. Unsaved. Any any worry or thought that like, it's been a while here, and would you be getting the same Joel Quenville that is second in league history? Has he? You know, the things that he's gone through in the last three years is mm-hmm. that is that going to affect the way he coaches? Is it going to affect the way? players look at him is that not a conversation that you need to have absolutely yeah i I don't know how you don't have that conversation i think the perception like it's a younger league you know i I, the way guys maybe look at him the way maybe people talk about him i don't know it might not be a slam dunk that i agree this is this is the the right hire you you think you're getting stanley cup champion and all of that pedigree and you you can but is it some of the guys might look at him still there though is it still there I just, and then the media, not, and then the media perception, yeah. and mm-hmm. I just don't think, you know, we talked yesterday. I think it was about the difference between X's and O's guys versus motivational run through a wall guys. Mm-hmm. Like everyone's pretty similar, X's and O's, fairly like not entirely, but like does it take away from Quenville's run through a wall for that guy if you feel like some of that reputation is tainted? Yeah. And so maybe you're not getting what you think you're getting in him, and then maybe it's just not worth it, you know. And I do think someone would take a chance on him, but the Leafs are at a pretty pivotal point in their franchise here, and it would it, be a, a weird hire for me at this but, point. But, I mean, Pelly said multiple times that the only priority... Is winning. Is winning. And to be honest, like, that's that's good, I think, for fans that they're, they're going to prioritize winning, mm-hmm. but I don't Just think that win. he meant at the cost of... There's 31 teams prioritizing that. Right, yeah. come on. Oh, not yeah, the Sharks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, yeah, no, I know you're. I'm just saying, like, they he kept bringing it up over and over and over and over. And if you're trying to be this cutthroat, you think you'll do anything to win, boy, that's doing anything to win, mm-hmm. and that's a dicey one, especially in this market. I, I, the more I think about it, the more I don't want it. Yeah, it's it's just he's been away a while. I don't know, this feels a little crazy. Do you want a, a tree living clip on the coaching search? Yeah, let's have it. Clip one tree living. Um, listen, there's some there's some good coaching candidates out there. We we intend to explore them. I'm not going to get into specific individuals. Um, as far as the timeline, Terry, we we want to be thorough, but we also understand there's there's other openings. Um, you know, we we it was a difficult day yesterday. You know, and I I, I think the the process that we went through. Up until the, the puck went in the net Saturday night, we're, we're doing our focus is solely on trying to win that series. And then you go through, you know, you, you go through all the stages, right? You, uh, I, I believe you got you to gotta step back. You don't want to make emotional decisions, and it's been emotional. It still is. Um, so I wanted to deal with, with Sheldon properly and, and really be clear and think that process through, spend some, some quality time with him. Um, and then once that decision was made, get on to, to the to to the next step. So we began that yesterday. You know, we're 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 not waiting. Um, we're going to be as th- we're going to be thorough. This isn't something that's going to be hastily done. But we certainly know that there's 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 some quality candidates out there, and we want to get to them as fast as we possibly can. Got to think by next week, they'll name a head coach. There will be a new coach, the Toronto Maple Leafs, by next week. Oh, I'll have something to talk about next week in early far. Yeah. Odds on, odds on <laughs> Craig Ruby. And not that I'm saying that's my choice. But just I, I can't see. Else. McClellan, I could see. Yeah, I yeah. can see. Yeah. Oh, yeah? I, I, yeah. yeah I, I do. Yeah. Wait, wait, what do you? I, I, I think it's flip a coin between the two of them. Wow. Yeah. Only they know right now where they're leaning towards. Dun, dun, dun. All right. Our thanks to Luke Fox from Sportsnet.ca. After the break, it's Doug McClain off the rails Friday. Don't go away. All right, let's go national. The Kiprios, Justin Bourne, Sammy McKee. We are the real Kipper and Bourne show. Wherever you're watching and listening, Sportsnet, Sportsnet 650 in Vancouver, Sportsnet 960 in Calgary. Thanks for joining us. This hour of Real Kipper and Bourne brought to you by Bet365. So we're going to welcome in Doug McLean somewhere on the road between Florida and Summerside. 
I think. I guess. I don't know. What, 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 what did he tell you? I forget. <laughs> Port I Huron. Know. Yeah, there you go. Port Huron and Sarnia or something. That's what he said. So, Do you think he had a chance to listen to the Leafs press conference? I don't know. Yeah. I don't think he would. No. He'll, you know what he does? He's like Elliot. He'll just scroll his phone. <laughs> pick up what he needs to pick up. <laughs> and well. follow X or Twitter or whatever you want to call it. I mean, there's really, like, we talk about it to break it down mm-hmm. because that's what we do. We're a hockey show, Leafs show. But, I mean, it was pretty uneventful. Very little. It wasn't like, it wasn't like last like, year where yeah. Brendan and Kyle Listen, had a head-to-head. They, they the... just want to get through it. Yeah, it they, wasn't. They know it's. If you don't win your last game of the season. It's a tough presser. They're always going to be, okay, why'd you fall short? You know, that sort of vibe is coming for the Carolina Hurricanes. You know, I'm starting to hear people calling them Corsi mongers and, mm. you know, faux analytics, you know. Mm. Who saw that? Three Me. nothing. Me. You did? Yeah. With the goaltending? Rangers. Rangers are better. Rangers are good. Rangers are good. I said I said at the start of the playoffs that the Rangers are going to win the cup and Shosturko is going to be the and the and I did bet a dollar on they've it. Got, they, 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 they've gotten be- better quickly too. Yeah, as good as they were during the regular season with their accumulation of the points and the President's Trophy, they've really gotten a lot better in a very short period of time. Yeah, Lafreniere becoming Nathan McKinnon yes. helps. Yeah, it does. <laughs> you know, like, and the back how about end, that one? the back end pass Panarin makes to him and he shoots it right off the bar and in big yeah. goal. They ended up tying it, but Panarin scores in overtime. Yeah, you can't blame the goalie on on that one. Across the middle of the yeah, ice, just ting. But, you know, seeing the stars, their stars elevate in the big spots. One of their stars is their goalie. Like, I just, I love that team. And, I mean, we have a Rod Brindamore clip talking about his power play. People are saying he's going to fit perfectly in Toronto. All for 14 on the power play in this series. That penalty kill, they get a shorty on it last night. Like, it's just, it's not going well. No. But do you... Do, do but, we want to do the clip now? Well, yeah, I want to ask Kipper about Brindamore. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, you know... I, yeah, what? Like, is he available now? I, is he is he a coach that's out there for can, your can I, Toronto I, Maple Leaf, Sammy? You want me to know my honest thoughts just between the three of us? Not yeah, now you don't want him. Okay, just keep it, yeah. I, now kinda, you don't want him. Kind of reminds me of Sheldon Keefe, but played in the NHL in the cup. He very Keefe. The way it... Co- they, it reminds oh, me of early Keefe. I, it, it reminds me of early Leafs Keefe with him, the way they play. They're possession, possession, possession. Oh, they go forward. But they want to shoot. All they do is they shoot bad shots. Where they have 100 shots last night, two threatening ones. Like, it's just, it's dork hockey. It's total hockey. And it's oh. just, it's never worked. It doesn't work. They lose every year. If, they don't have any scorers. Yeah. You hand what? Rod Brindamore. Jay Gensel's one of the best scorers in the history of the playoffs. And they've had him for... Oh, Svechnikov. They yeah, have you're an 80-point uh, guy. They're, Jarvis they're, is Jarvis. a 30-goal scorer. They have lots Every, of talent, man. The they got has tons of talent. They don't have elite talent. They don't have any of the mm. top, top-end guys the way a lot of these teams do. Well. And it's not just the shooting the puck from everywhere thing. They have the puck in the offensive zone the whole hockey game. I know. You say what you want. They're just it's, going in circles. Fire it has worked, and so there's no, no, it's going to yeah. be tough for them to defend themselves for sure. The other thing I told you guys before this whole thing got started, I don't like hearing about Rod Brendamore's contract. Not helpful this time of year. Not helpful. Yeah. Distraction. So then what now? I lived it in 94 with Keenan shopping the Detroit Red Wings mm-hmm. job. So then what now? He he's going to sign? Though. He sure going to sign? hurt you guys. Well, we also had guys that, Won the cup five times. <laughs> yeah. so Set us down. Yeah. Because of Brian Leach and Mark Messier, yeah. that helped. You know, I don't know what's going on there. I mean, they got some good leaders there. Stahl's a good leader. So I don't know how it's affecting anybody. But I, it's just don't need it. And also, like, is it like a the stock market? Like Rod's value has gone up or down based on a couple of wins or losses here? Like, is it I, just the only thing? Like, I'm not even saying that I'm angling for him to be the coach of the Leafs here. But... Having these con- these contracts talked about and the distractions paired with getting swept in the playoffs, all we ever talk about is how he wants to be there. Did he get swept? Well, they're about to. Are they? For the second straight year. They're going to get swept? I'd Got say. Written right off. Yeah, okay. I 100%. I mean, I just I think the Rangers are just way better, and they're up 3 nothing. so. Uh-oh. All if, right. Yeah, Doug. Iffy Doug. Let's try to pick up Doug McClain. Off Highway 81. Oh, 
we're just uh, cruising around Chicago, Clark and I. So I hope the reception's okay. I, uh, we're okay for now, but just stand still, would you? I'm standing still. Um, I'm standing still. I'm sitting still in the car. You going for a job interview in, with the Blackhawks, or no? Is this just a personal trip? And I heard they were looking for a mascot. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be it for sure. Well, I have experienced hiring mascots. I was, I had to, I had to go to a, this huge. When I became president of the Blue Jacks, I had to go to this huge event. To, to, I was on the panel to pick the mascot out. So I've, I've got a lot of experience with it. I'm sure you do. Um, any, and, uh, I, and I picked, I picked Billy from the University of Wisconsin as our mascot. And I told you, the day of our home opener, he had a nervous breakdown, and then I had to get a filler for our first game of our franchise. I should have known that e -bug. was going bad. <laughs> I should have resigned that day. So, so the role of the president of a hockey club? He, well, I don't know who would be in charge of the mascot. Would it be Telly, or would it be Brendan Shanahan in charge of the mascot? Um did you did you watch the press conference? And if so, did you pick up any signals on who would be leading the charge on ma mascots? The bear, for instance. I think that if they start off slow, Shanahan will become totally in charge of that department. What did you get out of uh, today? If you were able to, you know, pick up uh, any news sites, or, or did you actually see it or hear of it? You know, I heard about it. And I think. Look, I I, I said the. Uh, to John Shannon and, and McCowan's podcast a couple of uh, 10 days ago that I didn't think that Brendan Shanahan's job was in jeopardy. And I'll, and I'll tell you simply why, because Keith Kelly comes on the job a month ago. The last thing he needs on his plate is looking for a new president. Um, you know, he's going to do the same as tree living did with the coach. He's going to bide some time and re and continue to evaluate uh, Brendan and tree living and uh, you know there's no panic to uh, to make that decision I think they would have certainly discussed that there has to be some dramatic changes made to the hockey club so I'm sure they're on board with that so I think he'll let it go and you know I think if you're contemplating a new president it would be this time next year in my opinion how how awkward would that be for Shanahan, kind of being the authority figure and now having a you know someone sort of above him that he has to go to? You know, I, I, you have a good sense of these interpersonal relationships that go on behind the scenes. Seems like that would be a very different role now. But but everybody always has somebody to report to. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It, it doesn't matter. Even if you're the owner, you report to your board. You know what I'm saying? Or typically, you would have a you know, because you have minority owners and so on. So everybody always has somebody to report to. It, it may be, it may be a, re, a bit of a relief to Brandon that he's re, at least he's reporting to a, a high-end sports guy that has been involved in, in running sports organizations, albeit, you know, not a hockey team. But, well, Keith Kelly was heavily involved in running the Leafs for Rodgers when Brian Burke was the GM, he was intricately involved in that operation because I remember talking to him about it at the time. So I, I think that, you know, I think it's a, it, it's not a bad situation. I mean, if they, if Keith Kelly on his docket tomorrow was, I got to find a new president of hockey ops right now, that is something he doesn't need on his plate right now. In my opinion, he's got too much help. Mac, you can speak of, of being an NHL president and, and what it comes with. And Justin, uh, in our first hour, spoke of what came to his mind was, you know, the business side of being a president. And there's no question that Brendan had that on his plate. And, you know, a good example was his fingerprints all over the NHL All-Star uh, weekend. And good thing it was because the thing was fantastic and uh, was, was a great event. But essentially... Today, but let, me, but let, me tell, but let me tell you something. If Brendan Shanahan is may, a big focus is the NHL All-Star Weekend, that would indicate to me that he wasn't really that heavily involved on the business side because the CEO would be 
really the guy in charge of the business side of the Toronto Maple Leafs. But let's not kid ourselves. Brendan Shannon's number one focus of his job is the hockey club, the hockey side of the hockey club. Yeah, he's the president, but let's not kid ourselves. He's not down meeting with the ticket salespeople. He's not meeting with the marketing people. He's not meeting with the corporate salespeople. Let's not kid ourselves. That's a, His job is the hockey team, winning and losing. Hmm. And don't I... I, I wouldn't take. I wouldn't buy for a minute that he was involved in those other aspects. Or if he is involved, it would be minutely. So essentially, today the Toronto Maple Leafs have two presidents, and I'm just wondering now, moving forward, like you know, in the past what ten or fifteen years, I mean, we kind of joked about this when we first started hearing about this title, Mac. I don't know. Do you remember labeling it as a as a fake GM job? Yeah, I mean, look, the president of hockey ops, and look, it, and look, it's different being president of the Columbus Blue Jackets, where I was involved in the rink, the arena, arena football, you know, overseeing the ticket sales. But you're, you're even if you have that title, your still focus is mainly the hockey side. So, yeah, Brendan, re- essentially for me today, is president of hockey ops. And that's the a member of the fake GM society, you know. I mean, that's the that's the GM that doesn't have any the fake GM that doesn't have any pressure. But he has pressure now because he's being evaluated big time by Keith Kelly. But the bottom line is the wins. The evaluation will start when when the summer process starts of moving contracts and making some dramatic changes. They have got a mandate. It came out loud and clear today. There is a mandate to change this group. Finally, everybody else has been talking about it for five years, and now it's finally management talking about it, which is a first. Yeah. Did you want to? You good to turn the page here? All right, Doug. Let's uh, let's get your thoughts on a big series here in Canada, Vancouver, Edmonton. Were you surprised to see the Canucks come out and take the first one? I wouldn't say I was surprised. Uh, you know, I, I, what I was shocked about was that Edmonton blow a lead. You know, that 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 really that that threw me for a loop. With that, you know, with the type of team they have, the way they've played, you know, since Knobloch took over, the the calm demeanor that's been around this team, not a panic type of uh, operation, and uh, it, it really caught me a little off guard. Uh, some pair of goals, I mean. You know, we talked about that going into the playoffs. Was was Edmonton's goaltending going to be good enough? Who would ever believe that Edmonton's goaltending was the problem versus Vancouver's when they got a kid in goal, you know, or at least a number three guy in goal? It shocked me. And, and the other thing that bothers me is this, you know, the CC combination there with Nurse. I mean, they were they were more of a problem than Skinner was. So that's that's a bit of an issue that, are they gonna? Is that pair gonna be that be that suspect in a turn in a game in a series like this? They can't be, or they're or they're gonna have major problems. Just just talking about uh, the goaltending here. You're watching what Shesterkin's doing for the New York Rangers, and your jaw drops. And yet we're still in a position where some teams are contending, but have left themselves vulnerable. Carolina certainly in net now. And Skinner did not look well uh, in game one here. Like, how important is tonight for Skinner to bounce back before people well, start questioning whether or not it was left in the right hands? Yeah, well, look, I, just a second on Carolina. Like, I'm blown away, to be quite honest. They, they're the smartest guys in the block. This Talewski guy that's their assistant GM that apparently everything has to go through him to get approved in that organization. The assistant GM, the analytics guru, uh, the genius of all geniuses. And the one thing they haven't been able to do is find a goaltender. And I know Borny's having a love affair with Freddie. I, I, I get that. And I can tolerate that. But, but uh, I mean, this has gone on for three years where all of a sudden they go to Freddie, they go to Rantman, and all of a sudden, they, you know, they go to the kid. This is a team that's supposed to win a Stanley Cup. And you've got three backups, three backups, essentially. So three guys that have done nothing in, in, in the playoffs, deep in the playoffs. And that's who you think that Rob Brendamer is going to lead you to the Stanley Cup. 
I, I'm blown away by it, that they've gone that route uh, with all the problems they had the last three years, and they still have the same three guys there. Blows me away. Doug, what is the deal? Why can't teams analyze goaltending? Why can't anyone figure out, like, okay, they're going to give Corpusalo well, all tell, this money? What's that? Uh, you, well, you tell me. You're the analytics guy. What, what do they do? They don't let them play back-to-back games anymore because they'll they'll be exhausted. And you can spray you know, their the back. record shows that, yeah, they're spraying their back. I mean, you cannot play back-to-backs. And, you know, they know they know all this about the goaltending analytics, but they just don't have that one thing figured out. The guy that stops the puck. We used to go off save percentage and things like that, but you must have some new metric to, to solve goaltending, don't you guys? Yeah, we, we can't. Me and the rest of the nerds can't quite figure it out, Doug. We're still we're we're still <laughs> cavemen when it comes to this. No, 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 I just I'm blown away by it. I and uh, Rob Brendamore is sitting there looking at this group and saying, like, uh, are you kidding me? I'm supposed to win a Stanley Cup with Freddie Anderson, um, with Ratna and the kid. Like, seriously, I, I, I hope they come back. You're going against one of the best goaltenders on the planet and a team that's hitting on all cylinders. And, you know, you see that winning goal. I know it was a bit of a fluke, but still, I, I, you know, you know when you when you got to change goaltenders halfway through a series, you're, you're in trouble. You, unless you're Vancouver. You expect Skinner to bounce back here? You know, he's been mentally tough all year. And thats I think that's the thing they most like about this kid. He's had a good year. He's been really mentally tough. I would expect Edmonton to bounce back. I'm a little concerned about Dreisaitl if he's out. That would make me a little nervous. But I, 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 I think Edmonton, this, this to me is going to be a long series. I, I, I really believe it will be a long series. Uh, Doug, how, how did you... How do you feel about players and playing through injury in the postseason? Like when you're a coach or a GM, do you have any say or input? Or when you're around, you just leaving it up to the players and say, tell me when you're available. Or you're looking at the doctors. What are your thoughts on the postseason and pushing through pain? You know, I talked to Nick about this this week. You know, I, I, I remember when we were in the Stanley Cup finals, all through that whole playoff run, our guys were beat up like you couldn't believe. Mm-hmm. Lots of guys would never have played in the playoffs if it was a, or would never have played if it was a regular season. But you couldn't keep them out of the lineup. I mean, they would go through a wall. Nick would know that from the Rangers run, how many guys were beat up. And you know that the Las Vegas, Las Vegas had, as, as Cassidy said the other day, nine guys had surgery this offseason after their Stanley Cup. Wow. Teams are beat up in the playoffs. And people play through unbelievably, uh, unbelievable pain. Now, I'm not suggesting if you have a concussion, you should play. There's, you know, anything that's that serious, and that's what it appeared to be with, with, with Matthews and, uh, and migraines. I know they're really difficult, but typical, it's hard to take. It's hard to get guys to come out of the lineup, boys. It really is. What does Vancouver do in that? I know um, in the latter part before the comeback, uh, Kelly Rudy on Hockey Night in Canada said maybe – go to DeSmith for the third period and uh, good thing that they didn't because uh, they found a way, but uh, you know, your, your thoughts on, um, on Shilov's starting game too. I, there's not a snowball chance. He's not starting. I mean, mm-hmm. the kid has won them. The kid has won them like seriously. Like he won in Nashville. He wins the game one, nothing. And Kelly saying, take him out. You're not serious. I didn't hear that. Well, they That's were down four-one, right? I think, Mac. It wasn't uh, unreasonable to think, uh, oh, you know, meant, you want to protect oh, the kid. Get, oh, I thought he meant get him a rest so he could start the next game. You know, I mean, I, I, I don't see it happening. I, I mean, I think they're going to go with him and see what I mean. If he loses, if he loses the next game, and he's and he's not very good, yeah, they'll change for sure. They'll go to the Smith, but it's pretty tough to change when he's one of the reasons you're where you are. Mm-hmm. Doug, I'll keep it in the pulled goaltender themes. Uh, Tonight, Florida and Boston are going back at it. Swayman gets pulled after, you know, going into the third period, I believe, after an unbelievable run of playoff hockey. How did you feel about the decision to put an all-mark at that point and then Boston's subsequent plan to just punch-a-size everyone in the face? I I thought it was was a good move to get Swayman out of there as long as you know you're going back to him, and they've got to go back to him. They've got no choice but to go back to him, in my opinion. Yeah. 
Um, you know, they, they did this foolishness last year in the cost in the series, flipping back and forth. Like, uh, Pee Wee Triple A, uh, let's rotate the goalies. Come on. This is the Stanley Cup playoffs. So, if, you know, to take him out if, when you know he's going back in 100%. Uh, tell him Pastor Mac to fight. I, that caught me a little off guard. I mean, I didn't have a problem, you know, saying to, you know, our tough guys, Probert and Kosher and, you know, whoever they were, uh, you know, yeah, go ahead, but. Yeah. Good grief. You know, I remember Paul Laws was begging me to fight Tony Twist. They said, if you're that dumb, you go ahead and fight him. You know, <laughs> you're welcome to it. You know, and he did. And they had a, you know, I think he heard his hand on Tony Twist's head. So, you know, I mean, I, you know, I mean, craziness, but having Pasternak fight, like, seriously, what in God's name are they thinking about? So, you know? so all those years. Monty, Monty, you know, Monty comes from a college where you're not allowed to fight, and he's letting his franchise player fight. You know, I mean, what what's going on? Seriously. <laughs> so let me let me get this straight. Uh, those years in Detroit, Proby would not fight until you gave him the nod. No, no, Proby would be on the bench. He, he'd be in front of me on the bench, and Wendell Clark would be on the boards, and he'd be going. Hey, Wendy, are you home tonight? <laughs> hey, Wendy, are you home tonight? It's Proby. Yeah, yeah and wow. Wendell Clark, and, and Wendell Clark, the, the, the tough, tough son of a gun that he was, he would be ready. To, I mean, they would duke it out, you know, how tough he was. And, you know, Proby and Ty, you didn't really, you didn't really have to. But what, what I loved about Proby's fight, Gerard Gallant was always the shift ahead of Proby. And Gerard would say to Proby, okay, I'm going on the ice and I'll 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 stay out a little long and I'll come I'll come quick so you can get out and at least you can start the fight with them tired. So that was a nice <laughs> little workout between Gerard Galan and, and Proby. Good chemistry between their, their lines. Hey, are are you sure it wasn't Brian Murray taunting Wendell? <laughs> no, bro. Oh, but I got a great story. I'll tell you sometime about him taunting Doug Gilmore, but I can't say it on the air. <laughs> oh, clean it up for us. <laughs> no, I just, I just, uh, I, he said some, he said something to Doug Gilmore that he shouldn't have said. And Doug Gilmore said back to Brian something about Brian's lisp, and I said, oh, oh. Doug, Dougie, don't go there. No, Brian, no, 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 no. Reg, Reg, what'd you say to him? It was ugly. Anyway, <laughs> it, was in, it, was in, it was in Calgary, and I, it was one of the one of the worst times of my life on the bench because I had just been with Dougie in St. Louis the previous year, and Brian's going after Dougie, and Dougie's going after Brian, and I'm caught in the middle of it. Oh, it was awful. It was awful. That's the name. Anyway, that's the name off the rails Friday yes. with Doug McLean. <laughs> and off we go. How how important is it for Florida Mac that Sam Bennett uh, plays? real soon like tonight you know sam bennett you know what i'll never forget this and i'm going to give you a little bit of credit here because you know like you know some people like to give you shots i will never forget on hockey i'll never forget on hockey central noon how you constantly said the Leafs should make a move for sam bennett and bring that type of guy into this organization to play for you in the playoffs. And I remember people losing their minds with you. You know why? Because I said, give up Check Nick Robertson. Oh. Yeah. I yeah. said, give yeah, up yeah, Nick exactly. Robertson after he scored 50 yeah. goals in wow. Peterborough. And people were like, yeah. you, you know, I'm, you're yeah. stupid. You're just well, dumb. Sure yeah. I thought you were talking about the Robertson that was in Dallas. And I was thinking <laughs> you're dumb too. But anyway, <laughs> anyway, let's, you know what? It, it, you know, Bennett is a real, real important guy for this hockey team. He really is. And, uh, and, he, and he bothers people. He's, he's one of those guys that he scares people. And I love that. Always have loved that. And this is a, what, third overall pick in the draft? Yes. I mean, he was per- perceived top, to be a, top pick. Sup- a superstar, a superstar type of player. Not what he's become, but I'll tell you what, he's just as valuable in the role he plays. He's been like Kachuk and Bennett have been two 
unbelievably key elements for the Florida Panther turnaround in the last few years. Those two guys. Anything else? Are you, hey, why don't you do like a Ferris okay. Bueller's day off and like go to the Cubs game and uh, what else did he do? Yeah, go for lunch? We're going to go to Wrigley. We're going to do Wrigleyville and try to relax a little bit. You know, but one of the, one, one of, we went to Gibson's last night for steak, you know, which was a nice treat, you know. Um, so I think, you know, overall we've had pretty good run, you know. All right. Well, safe travels, my friend. Well, big guy. Uh, go Leafs, go. Uh, no, I'm no, a little nervous. Go too. Oilers, tell Canucks. Pelly, if, if you run into Pelly, tell him it's not the Ryder Cup. I'm sorry. It's not. <laughs> we make on. Me, we make on. We're the Ryder Cup when we're playing golf. The Leafs are not the Ryder Cup. Okay? All right. I think he knows that. They've got oh, enough on course experience. Okay. He knows that. Uh. <laughs> yeah, I know. All right. Know. Okay. Thanks, Mac. Have fun, guys. That is Doug okay, McLean, thanks. former thanks, NHL sir, president, Tom. GM, head coach, and uh, he wrote something. I don't know what he wrote. A manifesto oh. of some kind. <laughs> All right. Well, Get any takeaways from Mac? Uh, he has a story he can't tell us. He hired a mascot at some sort of mascot. Yeah, who had a nervous breakdown. <laughs> competition. Before the opening game, his mascot had a nervous breakdown. Buddy, I would too. If you had to put me in one of those things and I had to walk out in front of people, clown it up. N- nervous breakdown and lisps. When, when, That's what we got hey, out of Doug McLean today. When I was a kid at the on sounded attack games, me and my buddy Chris, Chris Robinson, shout out if you're listening, we used to berate the the mascot chase so you look back at yourself be like chase, what a chase him around the was. rink copy 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 and he would just run away from us basically yeah. and finally he turned around and with like the big smiley cubby face i went get away from me <laughs> and me and my buddy chris never laughed harder in our life so there's a little mascot story Got for what you wanted. there you go that's great there you go uh game time game time. all right let her rip it's game time. Presented by Bet365. Visit the app for latest odds and find out why it's never ordinary. A Bet365 must be 19 plus. Ontario only. Please play responsibly. No, I'm feeling very stupid. Oh. More stupid than normal. Mm. Uh, I was looking at a weekly check-in on the favorites to win the Conn Smythe and the Stanley Cup. And in a bit of a throwaway comment when we were doing picks at the start of the playoffs, I picked the New York Rangers to win the Cup and Igor Shesterkin to win Ooh. Conn Smythe. Mm-hmm. The favorite to win the Stanley Cup at the moment is the Stanley Cup. Is, it the, is the Stanley Cup? Is the New York Rangers at three to one? And to win the Conn Smythe, the favorite is Igor Shesterkin at plus yeah. five fifty. Should have bet money on that. Yeah, and you have Trocheck is second. Vincent, he's like Trocheck. Well, I'm just he's, he's been awesome. Been, Vincent yeah. Trocheck is plus twenty eight hundred, twenty eight to one for Vincent Trocheck. Oh. But it's just if they win, it's very clear yes. who's going to be the yes, Conn Smythe yeah, trophy winner. Can. I agree. The second favorite is Connor McDavid. Nathan McKinnon's still up there, 12 to 1. Kale McCarr has moved way up need, to 14 to 1. Need a shot on goal tonight, though, to continue that. I put zero shots on goal for Connor McDavid. Like, what is it's that? It's hard out there. It's hard. Told you. Everyone it's like, shuts her down. No one, anytime you're in a 50 50 puck decision, everyone backs off. You know what are the odds? Like, what are the odds that, like, Connor McDavid doesn't, or Nathan McKinnon, like, don't get a shot on goal? Ah, uh, like, would they ever put out. that out there? For sure, but I don't think the line for their shots would be set at like two and a half shots. They would never give let's, you a number even. For, let's see if I can figure that out on the fly. If you yeah. like, you know what the yourself. odds are that they don't get a shot on goal? It's like, I mean, he can't have gone zero shots in a game so, more than once or twice all year. I, the, I bet you it's more than that. You think he's gone well, uh, come on, three or four of, nights to zero? A couple, couple three and four nights. This, this and, I can handle. So this it's, I can do. It's, I mean, might be more than just couple i found i mean there's odds for them to get a shot the odds for Connor mcdavid to get one shot mm-hmm. is minus five thousand <laughs> so you have to bet yeah like, shots okay yeah. and to zach hyman is minus 6600 for one shot on net so one two what are you counting? games with zero shots for mcdavid this year three 
Wow. Three games with zero shots in the regular season. Okay, so you were close. Yeah, and we're, we're on to I thought one. there might be like six. But against LA, he had two games with just one. You know, like it's tough in the postseason. Then when you're a star player, they you take you get some extra attention. It's and, not the same hockey game. And just looking at the two games on the ice this evening, the Florida Panthers are minus one thirty at the T D Garden in Boston. Boston's plus one ten and the exact same odds for the Edmonton Oilers, minus one thirty. The Vancouver Canucks plus one ten as a home underdog. I don't say this much, but bet that Florida won. Mm-hmm. I feel good about that. Oilers are winning tonight, right? So if you think that both the favorites tonight are going to be comprehensive victors, mm-hmm. both minus a goal and a half, that parlay pays plus 785. I don't want a minus a goal and a half. but I mean, you're a big tough guy over there. You think that the, that the yeah, favorites well, got also it. also a smart guy. Put so. your money with your mouth. It's, it's a combination. But anyways, uh, that was game time. Presented by Bet365. Visit the app for latest odds and find out why it's never ordinary. At Bet365, must be 19 plus. Ontario only. Please play responsibly. And before we go. Text us. Text us. Text 59590. I'm sure you have lots of thoughts on your mind about uh, the past week for the Leafs. Ideally, the Vancouver and Edmonton. Well, Vancouver and Edmonton, I'd like to hear from you. Yes. Please, Vancouver, text in how nice I've been being to you. I've been a very, very good boy pandering towards you, so <laughs> text in. And I even had the score right the last game. You did 5-4. So there you go. So text us, 590-590. All right, we'll get some sounds from Brenda Moore, Bednar on a controversial hit. Yeah, I mean. We'll get into that, mm-hmm. plus your texts. Plenty more still on Real Kipper and Board. Game two, round two, we saw a very hard, heavy hit. Behind the net, Jamie Benn, mm. Devon Taves. Mm-hmm. Caught him high? Caught him a little high. A little high. All right, we got sound from uh, head coach Jared Bednar. We do have, let's play it. Yeah, um, Taves is fine. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's a, it's a physical game. It's a physical player. Um, I just, you know, I don't know. (laughs) I don't know what to say. It's, it's, I mean, it, does he catch a piece of his shoulder? Yeah, I guess you could argue that, but the target is high and it's at his head and it makes contact with the head. And I've seen, you know, many times guys get, called for the headshot and penalty with a lot less than that but i guess they didn't think so in this time of the year you got to play through some of that stuff but for me i don't know just makes me wonder again what I, the rules that i know and don't know and we'll never probably figure out but it is what it is you got to play through it i'm glad he's okay i'm glad he said that that we'll never figure it out yeah yeah because it's unfigured outable <laughs> what, it should, should it be unfigure outable? Yes. Yes, it is. Because there's two camps. Mm-hmm. One that says anything you, anytime you touch the head, you're out of the game. Yeah. And then there's that gray part that Bednar's talking about. What did you think of the hit? I thought it was a hard hit. Boy. And I'm, I'm okay. It's... I'm okay with yeah. it. And I'm sorry that he, you know, the portions of his head got caught. But yeah. this is. You don't want to see a guy get thrown out. Like, we were, like, how many hits like that? Two, three, maybe a night? You're going to have three or four guys thrown out. You're going to have yeah, I, 12, 14 guys on the bench. I mean, that, if you're Jamie Benn, you see one of the best defensemen on their team coming around the net like that. You're licking your chest. You have the song, the light him up, up, up yeah, song and you in your really, head as you come around the and net. And at that point, oh, I don't geez. know if you really care if you. You're just trying. You're trying to inflict some pain there. We're, well, ben is we're seeing some crunches. Tank. We're seeing it, some crunches. Yeah, I, I I'll say. I feel like it's predatory. I feel like I don't like it. I feel like it's a legal hit. Yeah, I. You know, like if I'm on Colorado, like you tried to hurt our good player for sure. You did. However, I can see why within the letter of the law, it's allowed. Boy, Taves. He, I mean, he has the pockets. Tough to say it's not legal. It's just. Could be dirty and legal for me. Big hit. But you're in agreement that, like, just trying to simplify it as any kind of contact to the head, you're out of the game. Is, I don't want that. It's, it's impossible that. to police. Yeah. Rempe will never play another game. Well, Rempe maybe shouldn't play any more <laughs> games. That guy is a absolute... He's his learning. Da- oh, God. His dangerous hits per minute is true to he roof. Didn't, he didn't get to play last night. No, he he was, was, no I wasn't playing. His coach at no yeah, more? Yeah. Well, he may not. Yeah. 
He'll find a way to get in. He doesn't anyways. have to play every game, but then the first shift of the game. I bet you he plays the first two games of every series they have. There is a absolute hoot nanny in that game in the first. Yeah, and eventually, wish he was out there. Then they're not going to lose seven and zero. Oh. did? Uh, sorry, when you guys we started were, seven and zero. Oh. Seven and zero, oh, but did you go eight and zero? Oh? No, I think we lost the uh, last game, or uh, we lost game four against Washington. So we beat the Islanders four, and then we lost, I think, or then we beat Washington in five is how I remember it. Maybe Carolina gets one here. You never know. Stranger things have happened. I'm just looking at what happened. The New York Rangers indeed swept the uh, New York Islanders, and then they beat the Washington Capitals in five games. So you're correct. Then you know what happened in the semis. Yes. Uh, some sort of was there, was, there about a was there something about a guarantee that yeah, I'm remembering? Something. And then, uh, you know, in the final, it was rather memorable one as well. Maybe a repeat final this year. Yeah, wouldn't that be great? We haven't Love played. That. We have not played the Brenda Moore clip, have we? We have not. All right, this is, let's about, to this Rod. is about his power play and his team in general. Rod well, the Bod. Well, I mean, we're, we're not we're not executing very well. I mean, <laughs> you got to give them credit. They, they're you know, doing a great job on the kill. We did have, you know, I thought the first two or two and a half power plays were actually quite good. We got a lot of good looks and then gave up that shorty. And then I thought we just kind of got away from what we were originally trying to do. And obviously that's been it's uh, three games in a row. Same story, which uh, I hate it for the guys because we were playing really, I think, really well. You take that part of it out of it. It's, uh, you know, been been I've done everything that we've asked the guys to do. Okay, that's Keefe. Yeah, very Sheldon Keefe. That was Keefe esque, was it not? Can't be down three and zero oh and say that we've really good process. Good that was good we process. Just... We're doing good things. Yeah, we're playing well. It's tough. Are they, how many? See, you, but you can get away with that in Carolina. In Carolina, yeah. yeah. Well, they lost twice in overtime. Try saying that in Vancouver or Edmonton or Toronto. It's tough for me because, like, too. to me, if like you flip the goalies, you know, is, is the process enough to win? Probably. Yeah, but you don't get to do that. And you don't. You don't get to do that. No. And I think it was a... But I think it's fair for a coach to say that we don't feel like we're getting outplayed. I think know? it was a really, really gutsy move to go to the uh, the kid, Kochekov, right? Mm -hmm. Didn't work. No. And it's. I think now that it doesn't work, that's one of those ones that you get praise for when it does. Yeah. And when it doesn't, you have to take criticism and you benched your guy that had been really good, had two bad games. You benched him? Yeah. I would have benched him too. Yeah. 100% probably would have benched him after game one, but you got to live with that decision, right? Agreed. So earlier uh, in our Leaf edition, we had a conversation on injuries this time of year. Mm -hmm. He didn't like bad back for Joseph Hall. I didn't like headache for Matthews. Leon Dreisaitl tonight is a game-time decision. Mm -hmm. I think one of the last things he said was, it's going to take a lot for me not to play tonight. Yeah. Well, I mean, didn't he get 100 points in the flames of the high ankle sprain a couple years ago? That's you, right, too. <laughs> do you expect to see him tonight yes. or not? Yeah, yes. did they have a, what are they called, a hydroculator? <laughs> you get a warming pack on your back and some medicine in you and yeah. just get out there and do your best? Give what you got. Um, I, I am nervous for him. I am, too, because bad because, back can tweak early. Well, I mean, well, I mean, uh, he's a player. He, watching him on the bench... Couldn't catch his breath, it yeah. looked to me. Seeing me ribs? Ribs. Oof. Or the nightmare is uh, the cartilage. Mm -hmm. Pull off the yes. ribs. Ah! And yeah. if you, it, like, you can't shoot a puck. No. Okay. You can't sneeze. No. Oof. Doctor said I need a backhand. <laughs> that's, that's the one you, you got to worry about. Yeah. So you're. No, I, I'm with you. It, it's. You know, you're going to, I think it really, he's so important to them. He's such a great playoff performer. How much better is it going to get in two days? I think it depends on what the injury is. Is it, if it's muscular, Yeah. that's when I'm not as okay with it, when I'm like, you got to find yeah. a way. But if it so, is something like this, it's not spasms. as simple as, yes, exactly. You know, that to me, see, feels like something you can figure out, but um, that ain't a bacchiotomy worthy. We have a text on the text line that says, do you run with Svilovs tonight? or put the Smith in. And we have a clip from Rick Tockett that I had just put in there. I was working on it during Producer. Doug. Producer. Kip, uh, sorry, Kipper is not on the board. It is Derek on the board. Uh, if you see that 
clip in there uh, on who goes tonight, you can let that rip. Well, I think he's earned the right right now um, to play, but that doesn't mean, you know, he's, uh, we haven't officially made a, uh, we haven't, I haven't talked to Clark. We haven't laid a round table yet, but um, the one thing we have, we have Casey and Casey can play, you know, he could play tomorrow. He's that uh, he's, 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 you know, he had a couple, uh, you know, a little bit of an injury a long time ago, and I think he's passed it. So he is definitely a, a viable op- option for us. Boys, I think I got to dismiss. I disagree. Yeah. Because it's the same situation you as could... going to Kachekov. <laughs> yeah. I think you could start the kid and keep him on a really short leash. Yeah. So... DeSmith did play in playoffs Mm -hmm. against Nashville and in his last game um, won a two-to-one game. Played really well, made 29 of 30 saves, or 30 shots made 29 saves. Mm -hmm. Like, he's good. He's kind of the guy you've been looking to all season long. I know his numbers in the regular season weren't awesome, but if you thought the kid was better than DeSmith, you'd have had him up during the regular season. They obviously think right now it's DeSmith. DeSmith? He's a good goalie. Yeah. He's one of those kind of short spurts he can give you. Yeah. He can give you a week or 10 days of great goaltending. That would go a long That's... way. That would bridge the gap to, to so Demko. They, they don't think about what fans think. And, you know, if you start listening to the fans, you become one. That's the old saying. But to me, if you're Rick Tockett and you go away from Stilovs and you put the Smith in there, against a red hot, you know, not red hot after, but their offense, uh, their offensive game's unbelievable, the Oilers, and they light up to Smith. You're just opening yourself up. Like if they go in there, they stick with Svilovs, and you lose anyway with Svilovs, you can then go to the Smith yeah. and be like, well, we tried Svilovs or whatever. We had one with him. To go to a different goalie after winning, that's a gutsy move, and I wouldn't because be making it. Because it's stupid superstition. I, To me, I love the idea of you coach mm. every game and you say, you put the guys in who you think are their best players. You don't do this whole magical. So you both like, would go with the Smith. It's a gut feel that to JB's point, it's just a gut feel. You go with whoever you think and and, and you're confident that you can win with. I know mm. Canucks fans listening right now watch she loves. I know I I'm, go she loves ten yeah. times out of ten. Yeah, no question. But even though he let in a couple in that game, I was like, oh my god. Yeah, that Ekholm one for the, the point. Now the Hyman one that went under his yeah. pad. Yeah. Like, I'm not being like, we got to get, get this kid in because <laughs> we, we scored both, five times on a bad goalie. They both hit the middle of the net, yeah. both of those goals. Yeah. So uh, I, I do think it is more. Going with them. Either way, you can't say, you know, they're fools for putting in either guy. So yeah. they'll they'll make their call on that and no judgment here. Uh, Some. Just a, <laughs> just, just a quick note that. Uh, nope. Dan Murphy texted me. What is it? That he lots of starting. All right. There All you right, go. There you go. I was solved. Right. Problem yeah. solved. Uh, not that we're watching the world championship with great. Uh, Why do you like talking about I am? They are getting up tomorrow at 6 a.m. Okay. to watch Canada play somebody. All right. No, and I'm you're going to see some veterans coming in, including John Tavares. Does that surprise you at all? At yeah. age, uh, what, 34 soon that he would want to go over Where there? Where is the world championships? Prague. Prague. I'm going to leave my three kids under five years old at yeah. home and go to Prague for a week, play hockey. Yeah. I'm in. <laughs> to far as his home situation. I think, it, I think it gives you a sense that this guy still wants to prove that he's a top player yeah. and there's lots of gas in the tank for him. I would say the public perception in Toronto of Tavares and how he views himself are different in that if you're Tavares, he scored 30 times this year, 29 goals. Yeah. 30 goal scorer who, you know, 65 points, yeah. wants to be a part and considers himself a player, wants to show that, yeah, like I am, consider me for the Olympics when it comes up or the Four Nations face off. What's that do for what's that what's that do for him it. next year though? Like is it I'll go and play anywhere to be a sixty five point guy? Or is it with the Leafs? You're talking about like is his focus to try to play just, uh, just to prove that he's still a top player? Like and do the Leafs still feel like on the seventh year of his deal that he can help them get to a conference final or a Stanley Cup final? It could also be that John Tavares is a hockey player. And doesn't know how many opportunities he'll have left in his life to wear the Canada jersey. And, you know, pretty cool opportunity. So, could just be that short, playing shorter yeah. than he wanted to. It's this interesting year. to see the, the kids that they uh, invited Fantilli and uh, the first rounder pick, uh, Celebrini. Yeah. So, they, they were there. Yes. And then Hagel came over, and I don't know, 
some other guys who won this race in Canada and they and came then, back and said we're not going to play back. much. Yeah. That kind of sucks. Totally sucked. Totally weird. I would hate that if I was them. I'd fly all the way over here. They and... were in Budapest? That's where, like, I was celebrating was in Budapest yeah. and they came back can, or something? Can I tell you, like, hate Hagel for that move. I hated Hagel already and I hate him more. I want to get a celebrating him. spot. Well, it's like. Oh, that, what? I'm sorry. Should he get out of the way so you can see? Like, are you, I just, he wants to play for as Canada. A fan, as a fan, and they want to. Whoa, don't throw your stuff at me. As I'm a angry. fan, I understand that they don't make decisions because of me, but it's way more interesting to watch Fantilli and Celebrini than it is to watch Brendan you know, Hagel. Yeah, hey, you know what's interesting? I mean, they want to yeah. win. Yes, take a, yes. Brendan Hagel is way hey, better than both those guys. Do you, you want to hear, hear something interesting? The GM is Rick Nash. Uh huh. In he, Fantilli's a. Columbus uh, Blue yeah. Jacket. I love Fantilli. Right. So and, you think Fantilli would be bothered by this? Like, oh my yeah. God, is it a? Uh, is it? Would you? Saint is Louis he available? Is it Saint Louis two point oh? Would you? <laughs> would Eisenman? you be bothered? Yes. <laughs> Confirmed. <laughs> I would be bothered by that. I, I would just be bothered. Don't call me then. You know, like if you're waiting for Brandon Hagel's gonna replace me, then don't call me. Brandon Hagel's really good. Yeah, he's good. Really good. Sure. You don't think he's really good? He gets you 30 goals or something? He's an impactful player. Yeah. Uh, is this like the fourth time we've mentioned Columbus in like the last mm -hmm. two weeks? And What's uh, wrong with us? the show's not canceled. Fascinating uh, what if. Remember that? The Dubas trade for Hagel with Flurry from Chicago? And that leaked out. And there was the rivalry of the Kyles, Kyle Davidson. And he got Yeah, he Hagel's got involved in that? Yeah, it was two first-round picks and nyes for Hagel and Flurry. I'm okay with that not happening. What a what if that what is. What a what if, though, for sure. I hear Columbus is still trying to get, like, somebody big to run their team. Oh, to run their team? Yeah. Like, a president or a uh, oh, GM or I, they, a they, McLean? Yeah, I, I think, I don't think it's happening because Montreal won't let him go, but they're all over Jeff Gordon. Really? Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. JD knows him, right, from the oh. New York days. Yeah, but yeah, I, yeah. I don't think he's going to, they're, they're going to release him. And the other one I hear is Ken Holland to go to Columbus. Whoa. Like, are you talking about a GM? Uh, president. Yeah. I don't know what title you want to give it. Brian Burke. Give me a Burke sighting. Yeah. I mean, hey, uh, I think in Columbus you need to have some big personalities. I think you, uh, they, to me. I think you're right. They need to attract attention. And, you know. Well, they tried it with Babcock. It only lasted like five minutes. It was a good idea in theory. It, I actually liked that hire at the time for this very th reason I'm saying. And it obviously, being I didn't anticipate him doing a weird. He did a, he did a weird. Um, just quickly before we go, I was just looking at the Team Canada roster for this World Championship. This is a like there we might get a couple guys suspended in this tournament. This roster is crazy. What do you mean? It's Bunting, Brandon Tanev, Gunther, McBain, Mercer, McCann, and then it's Nick Paul, Cousins, Hagel, Ridley, Gregg, Pierre Luc Dubois. Oh, it's feisty. That's a greasy That's squad. That's a Canadian hockey oh. team. And yeah, Snot is right. Jamie Alexiak on the back end. Like, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm so into this team. I'm, I gotta tell you. I'm ya. still not waking up at six in the morning. Well, to well, watch. God, no. Can't be neither than I, bud. But I'll watch one that's out of normal. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're playing like hey, Denmark. You didn't read a text, did you? <laughs> no, I didn't read. Yeah, I did, when I, some guy asked who's Philos was starting, and we already knew. Oh, Thanks, buddy. Okay. Thanks for that text. Made us look dumb. <laughs> You don't even know you're a we fan. Did that to we ourselves. don't need help to look yeah. down. Well, no, I mean, he's a Vancouver fan. He's texting the show. He doesn't know who's starting tonight. Come on. <laughs> oh, wow. Catch up. Poor guy. I guess I'm the producer. <laughs> I should probably know that. All right. Thanks to Luke Fox in the first hour and Doug McLean in the second. Yeah. Thanks, Doug. Want to give me a score tonight? Florida, Boston? Florida, 4 1. Boston, 3 to 2. Vancouver Canucks, 4 2. Winner. I'll take the flip of that. Oilers aren't going down to nothing. Yeah, no, they're not. Tonight, Vancouver. No, not. Yeah, Mike Knox. No, Sean say. Enjoy the games. Enjoy the weekend. And we're back Monday.